Hi, today we are going to study master method and extended master method to solve recurrence relation. Now what is master method? Master method is a direct way to get the solution of recurrence relation. It works for following type of recurrence equations. An equation which takes a form like t of n is equal to a into t of n by b plus f of n, where a is a co coefficient which is greater than or is equal to 1 and b which is also always greater than 1. In this case, there are three cases. First, f of n is nothing but a polynomial with highest degree b. So, we say that f of n is in big theta of n raised to d, where d is the power of n, which is always greater than or is equal to 0 in a recurrence equation. First equation says that t of n is in theta of n raised to d if a is lesser than b raised to d. So what we are basically doing from an equation we have to find out three components. Component A, component B and component D. Now, next we have to compare term A with another term b raised to d. If term A is lesser than b raised to d term, our complete equation t of n is in theta of n raised to d. Second case says that if term A is equal to B raised to D term, in that case T of N will be in big theta of N raised to D log of N to the base B. This is the second case of master method. And third case is generated when term A is greater than B raised to D term. In that case, T of n equation will be big theta of n raised to log of a to the base b. Now with the help of this three formula, we can solve any recurrence equation of a standard type a t n by b plus f of n. So let us see some of the examples and how master method is used to solve them. For example, take first a of n is equal to 2 a of n by 2 plus 1. Now in this first you have to check out are there any components like a, b and d. So if we compare with the standard equation we say that the first component 2 is equal to a. n by b so we say that d is equal to 2 also in this case plus 1. So, another term 1 is our f of n. If I have to represent 1 in a polynomial form of n, I would write it as n raised to 0. So, it is deduced that degree of polynomial in this case is 0. That's why we say d is equal to 0. Since f of n is equal to 1, which is n raised to 0. Now in this case, we have to compare two components, component A and another component B raised to D. So we will compare with 2 with 2 raised to 0. So 2 is obviously greater than 2 raised to 0, that is 2 is greater than equal to 1. So out of these three formulas, we are going to apply the formula number 3, that is A is greater than B raised to D. In this case, our final, according to this third rule, final theta will be log of n raised to log of a to the base b, that is log of 2 to the base 2, which is, is equal to theta of n. So, our final answer in this case for a given equation is a of n is equal to theta of n. Now let us take second example and solve according to master method. Second example says that recurrence relation t of n is equal to 9 t of n by 3 plus n cube. So first step is to find out three components a, b and d. From this equation we can find out that component a is equal to 9. 
B component is free and B component is nothing but power of n in another term is also free because f of n is n cube in our case. Here again we will compare a with b raised to d. So a is 9 and b raised to d is 3 raised to 3 which is, is equal to 27. So obviously 9 is lesser than 27 that is 3 raised to 3. So we are going to apply master theorem as per the rule number 1 where a is lesser than b raised to d. So in this rule t of n is equal to theta of n raised to d that is, is equal to theta of n cube. Now let's just take example number 3. In this example, recurrence relation T of n is given as T of n by 2 plus 1. Here notice carefully that component A is 1, component B is 2 and F of n is 1 that is n raised to 0. That's why we say D is equal to 0. So here we are going to compare component A with B raised to D. So 1 is going to get compared with 2 raised to 0 which is also is equal to 1. So 1 is equal to 1. According to the master theorem we are going to follow rule number 2 where A is equal to B raised to D. In this case T of N is equal to theta of N raised to D log of N. So this according to master theorem will be n raised to d that is n raised to 0 into log of n. So this would be theta of log of n to the base 2 because the component n raised to 0 will be evaluated as 1. So this is how master theorem works. Now let us understand what is extended master theorem and when it is going to get applied. So master theorem is also applied to the form of t of n is equal to a into t of n by b plus f of n. But where is the difference lies? Difference lies where what is your f of n. So when f of n is of type n raised to some power into log of some power n, then we are going to apply extended master theorem. Remember when f of n is simply a polynomial of type n raised to d then we are going to follow master theorem only. But if f of n is a combination of polynomial as well as log then we are going to go with extended master theorem. So here f of n must be of type n raised to log of a to the base b into some log of n of power k. If that is the case, then we say t of n is equals to theta of n raised to log a to the base b into log of n of power k plus 1. So simply if you notice carefully, we have just increased power of log from k to k plus 1. No other changes have been made to find out the complexity of recurrence relation. But this is the case when our f of n is of type n raised to log of a to the base b log of n power k. Now let us take another case. Another case says that when f of n is equals to or is in theta of n raised to log a to the base b plus some error value. Also in this case we have log of n to the power k. But our complexity in this case of recurrence relation t of n will be theta of f of n only. That means whatever the f of n is given will become the complexity of actual recurrence relation. We no need to increase the complexity or the power of log function. And third case says that if f of n is in theta of n raised to log a to the base b minus some error n to log of n power k then T of n that is the recurrence relation is equal to theta of n raised to log a to the base b. 
Now here I will tell you the difference for between these three cases. Whatever the second term f of n is given, we must compare its n power with log of a to the base b. If both of these terms matches, then we will apply first case. The difference between these three methods will be clear if we look into an example. So let us take our first example. So example one number one. T of n is equal to 2t of n by 2 plus n log n. In this case, a is 2, b is also 2 and f of n is n log n. Now here we have to find out f of n's big theta. If f of n is n log n, then the big theta of n log n is also n log n. But here, whatever the power of n is, let me rewrite in a form of log of a to the base b. So, in our case, log of a to the base b is log of 2 to the base 2. I will write the complete term on a power of n. So, this will be theta of n raised to log of 2 to the base 2 into log n. But do you know that log of 2 to the base 2 is also 1, which is actually matching with f of n's actual power. So n raised to 1 is equal to log of n to the base 2. So according to the master theorem, when f of n is in theta of n raised to log a by 2 to the base b, log of n of power k, we would write it as complexity of recurrence relation t of n is equal to theta of n raised to log of a to the base b into log of n power k plus 1. So here t of n will be theta of n log square n. So this is how extended master theorem work. Let us take another example to clear all the doubts. Now recurrence relation t of n is given as 3 t of n by 4 plus n log n. In this case, a component is 3 and b component is 4 and f of n is n log n. If I, read, if I have to rewrite my n term out of n log n with the help of log a to the base b, I would write it as log of 3 to the base 4. But do you know that log of 3 to the base 4 is having value lesser than 1? Yes, of course. To make it as power of 1, as of my left hand side, I must add some value to it. So log of 3 to the base 4 plus some value will make up the complete power of n as 1. And I have kept another term log of n as it is. As per the extended master theorem, theorem number 2, where n log of f of n is in theta of n raised to log of a to the base b plus some error into log of n to the base k, then the complexity of recurrence relation is theta of f of n itself. So here my complete f of n is n log n. So the complete complexity of t of n is also n log n. Take one more example and try to work it out along with me. t of n is equal to 4t of n by 2 plus n log n. Now in this case a is equal to 4 and b is equal to 2. And f of n is n log n. If I write down the power of n with the help of term log of a to the base b, I would write it as n raised to log of 4 to the base 2. But only log of 4 to the base 2 will make an answer of 2. So my term would be now n square. But originally my n power is 1. So I must subtract some error value from the term log of 4 to the base 2. That's why I write theta of n raised to log of 4 to the base 2 minus error value into log of n. Now according to the theorem of extended master, 
what we have to do if f of n is in theta of n raised to log of a to the base b minus some error log of k n then t of n will be theta of n raised to log of a to the base b. So here n raised to log of 4 to the base 2 will be 2. That's why t of n is theta of n square. So this is how extended master theorem and simple master theorem will work. Thank you everyone for watching this video. This is Munira Dubia signing out.